I'm going to tell you about the types of gas fires that you might meet on your assessment and how to calculate their ventilation requirements. Remember that with ventilation requirements for any device, that you should refer to the MIs if you've got them handy. Let's start with open fluid fires. Open fluid appliances do not need any ventilation if they are under seven kilowatts. If they're over seven kilowatts, then they need five centimeters squared of ventilation for every kilowatt that they are over seven. And remember that open fluid appliances take their air from the room that they're sitting in and get rid of the combustion gases to an outside source, usually via a flue. This is a decorative convector heater. An inset live fuel effect fire, also called an ILFE. And this is a decorative fuel effect fire, also called a DFE fire. Now these are the exception to the ventilation rule. They require a minimum of 100 centimeters squared of ventilation. If they're over 20 kilowatts, they require a ventilation in excess of 50% of the throat area of the flue. So you would have to measure the throat area of the flue, divide that in half, and then give them ventilation over that number. You won't be required to do that in your assessment. I'm just including that as a guide if you ever come across a very large decorative fuel effect fire. You also get fires that are room sealed. And for room sealed appliances, you don't require any ventilation at all. Here's a typical room sealed heating stove. Looks like a, a wood burning fire. But with all room sealed appliances, the air is taken from outside of the room and the products of combustion go back outside the room. So there's no need for ventilation. Here's a room sealed convector heater. They usually hang on the wall, but again, no ventilation required. You get them as radiant convector gas fires, they just look like the normal old fashioned gas fire, but they're room sealed. Flueless appliances. This is where the ventilation becomes a little bit more complex. Whenever you're ventilating a flueless appliance, you must use the flueless chart in your book. It looks something like this. They don't call them fires on the chart, they call them space heaters. And in general, there's a line of four. The bottom two are for LPG fires, and you can disregard them for your assessment. But the top two, you will be expected to be able to work out the ventilation. In a couple of slides, I'll show you exactly how to work that out. It's a lot easier 
than it looks on paper. The big difference, however, is that there's different ventilation requirements between a room and a living space. A room is somewhere where you spend time. A living room, a kitchen, something like that. A living space is somewhere that you pass through, like a hallway or a utility room. If you put a fire in either of those two places, they have different ventilation requirements from each other. It shows you on the chart exactly what you meant to do. So let's have a look at an example. The chart tells you that you must give one of these fires 100 centimeters squared to start with. That's a given. And then, and this calculations for a room, you've got to give it 55 centimeters squared of ventilation for every kilowatt over 2.7 net. So, if you had a flueless fire that was 5.7 kilowatts net, the way to work that out would be your 100 centimeters that you've got to give it, plus three kilowatts. Now the three kilowatts is because 5.7 is three kilowatts over 2.7. So three kilowatts, it tells you 55 centimeters for every kilowatt. So there's three kilowatts times 55, and that equals 165 centimeters squared. When you add the 100 centimeters to that, you get 265 centimeters squared. That's how you work out the calculation for a flueless gas fire in a room you do exactly the same in a living space, but the numbers are just slightly different. So flueless gas fires bring air from the room and they expend the products of combustion back into the room. And in order to do that safely, they use a catalytic converter so that the products of combustion that are coming back into the room are safe to breathe. Here's another example of a fixed flueless convector. You won't come across many of these normally they are LPG heaters, but you may occasionally come across one that's uh, linked up to the gas pipelines. <laughs>